Hey guys, welcome to the Sim Racing Paddock. I'm William Marsh and we're trying our hands at a live hardware review. So a lot of you guys have been asking me about how I get my Fnatic wheel rims working on an open sim wheel. So I've been planning on doing the review of it and I thought, why not try a live review? The last time I did a live review was with Race Room Racing Experience and I've never done a live hardware review. So this is the Sim Racing Machines wheel side, uh, or base side uh, uh, Fnatic adapter. And I'll share a little bit about it as a briefer, and then we can go into depth onto how it drives. So this adapter retails for about 116 British pounds. They ship worldwide. However, one caveat is that you can only get this quick release bit from Sim Racing Bay. Unfortunately, they are only selling it to Sim Racing Bay customers, which I'm not a big fan of, but I kind of understand why they're doing it for now, but hopefully they will sell it more to a wider public soon. But this, the big draw of it is you are able to use it with a Fnatic rim without any modifications. So no modifications to the wheel, and that is a big benefit. So one thing I have also is a few photos. So let's bring that up. So here is the internals of the unit. You can see in the middle is the circuit board. That is called the Teensy LC board. So the Teensy LC board, the way that works is it is a circuit board simulating a Fnatic Club Sport wheel. On the right side of the circuit board, you can see a micro USB, which is routed through it, go to the coiled USB cable you are seeing on the wheel. That cable you are seeing on the left side with that grommet that is for electromagnetic interference. So if your wheel is generating any EMI, you can have it on the quick release. So you're able to work it that way. The white bit on the far right of it, that is used to house the Fnatic electronics. So you can see the black circular bit. That is the pin holes for the Fnatic wheel. The silver circular bit, that is the threaded holes so you can get it secured on the quick release bit. This is how it would look with the quick release. Note that there are only four bolts that secure it. That is something familiar with Fnatic. If you look in the inside of your Fnatic wheel quick releases, you are able to actually see there are only four out of the five holes used. So it is by design, it is not a mistake. So this is how it would look with a quick release, the six hole pattern threaded through. I know right now on mine, I have only three through, but it's still as sturdy as heck with three. This has no movement, even when I was driving with the 100% challenge. Fnatic rims, they were able to hold up like a champ. You saw me doing the 100% force feedback challenge with it, and that was pretty straightforward. So, on the back of the quick release adapter, you can see how it threads through with the quick release. So, those six holes, they go through these six grommets, and then it'll go onto your OSW or direct drive wheels adapter to use a wheel on it. And also, one thing to mention is... Uh, with the newer kits, they do provide a carbon fiber bit on the inside of the quick release. That is because for some quick releases, they were having this issue getting a direct connection with the pins. So this pushes out that electronic box a little further, and that allows you to get a more direct connection. I was talking about that cord earlier. And the cord, which is this, this cable that is on the inside, you can hook it into one of the quick release holes. And that makes it so it reduces the chance of electromagnetic interference, 
which could happen with direct drive wheels. Fortunately, with my Sim Racing Bay OSW, I have shielded cables, so I don't need it. I only put it on here, for example, for the purpose of the review. That is a quick, quick primer on how this is working. And let's get into some action. So, how does this attach? Just like a Fanatic wheel. Boom, it's in. I will note that this has required a little more effort to get this removed. So it takes more effort for me to remove the rim. I think it's because this is made to be a little more snug to handle high torque. So to avoid damaging any of the electronics. That is my theory. So also note that you need to download a third party utility to handle the LED display. Out of box, all the buttons, paddle shifters, they work fine. However, I am using our Fana LEDs to uh, run this. So double click on Fana LEDs and boom, the lights show up. Uh, hold on, I'm gonna turn the camera a bit or bring it in. So, analids, the lights showed up. We can do the diagnostic test. You hear the rumble and the lights show up. So this works and it also simulates the rumble because it is detecting it as a Fnatic CSW wheel. So we'll fire up some Assetto Corsa and I'll show you how it works. Okay. So now we're good, but fan LEDs isn't working. Okay. Hold on. Why is not? Oh, fan LEDs was turned off. I accidentally closed out of it. That's why it wasn't working. So here we go. Display's on. Hold on. Let's see if I can get you a better look at it. for the moment. So you can see it's working. Whoops, and I just scraped the wall there, my bad. But you can see this is working just fine. And I can feel the rumble through the rim, which is very nice. Uh, for like the ABS motor. But yeah, this, you know, I, I forgot to boot up fan LEDs earlier, but yeah, this is working just fine. Note that you do have to turn off the Fnatic uh, default display in Assetto Corsa. You have to turn that off. And the way you do that is you go into your default the set of course the install folder you are right, slash system slash cfg uh, fanatic.ini and you can turn that off i'll show you in uh after this drive but yeah this is working just fine guys this is working well actually wait hold on a sec uh it froze at 67 miles an hour okay I've had some issues in the past. Uh, I thought I had it solved, but it looks like it's still acting up a little bit. I think it might be because of my USB hub though. It might be because of my hub, and I have so many devices plugged into it. So I think for this coiled USB cord, you might want to get an extension and plug it directly into your computer or, uh, work it out but yeah so this is working really well uh, it doesn't miss any buttons or anything like that it's a pretty straightforward converter one of the reasons I like this is because you have the option to really be able to use the Fnatic rims and 
Fnatic, in my opinion, has some of the best budget QR compatible RAMs. So, Thrustmaster's RAMs are good, but they, I don't think, would work with the torque of a direct drive motor. This, this will hold up uh, with the uh, with the way it works. There are a few cons though that I should mention. One of the main cons is it makes your OSW largely only Fnatic compatible with rims. You would have to manually remove all six bolts. Sure, you could put like a Holger QR1 quick release or something like that on this. However, that would bring your wheel way out. And I totally missed that corner. But yeah, so that would really bring the quick or this wheel out and you'd have to compensate for that and that's a less than ideal solution. The other con is this does add some length to the shaft. That's what she said. But if you look, hold on, Batman pants, because it's cold in here. Yeah, you can see it does add a bit of length. But I was easily able to compensate for that in my rig and it works okay. I like this so far because I don't have any high-end rims yet but this allows me to use all of my rims on a direct drive wheel i don't think the csl rims would work well with the quick release uh on a direct drive wheel i don't think it would work well i but this is a great option for the club sport wheel rims I've tested this with 30 newton meters and it took it like a champ. I'm gonna wrap up this review, we're hitting the half hour mark, but I'll talk about my quick pros and cons. Uh, pros, it allows you to use the Fnatic rooms easily with all the electronics, including rumble. You are able to really uh, get a relatively inexpensive option for having a uh, high-end driving wheel because this even though this rim is expensive it's or this converter or not converter the hub is expensive it is nothing compared to some of the higher-end wheels so if you look at the precision sim engineering those are start at around like a thousand dollars so this is a good option to get you started in the OSW ecosystem. Another pro is it allows you to use the display. It allows you to use the display and all the other features. You can even use the joystick. You can use the Fnatic joystick, which is nice. Uh, and also rotary encoders. So it allows you to use all of the features of Fnatic rims. Another pro is it's easy to put together. Uh, once you have everything put together, instructions are straightforward and it gives you an easy experience. And let's get to the cons because I'll admit there are some. Uh, one con is I feel the cable's a little too short. I, I'd like to see maybe an extra foot or two added to the cord because that would have allowed me to plug it directly into the computer. Uh, I would say the next con is that the uh, adapter part, the quick release adapter right now is hard to come by. You either have to own a Sim Racing Bay wheel or by some chance get one from Fnatic. But if you get the one from Fnatic, they charge you an extra 12, year, or 12 pounds. So it's a tough situation. And I'd say in a way it's brand synergy at its worst. And I can tell my left side suspension is a little damaged, so that's why I keep on running wide. So, yeah, that is another con. Uh, the third con I would say is that I've been having a little bit of erratic displays. I don't know if it's because of my USB hub or if it is because of EMI or something, but. I've had some Iraq displays, but I have never had an issue with a button not registering or anything. It's just the display. So that is one of the frustrating parts, but 
all in all, if you have a way to, or actually, no, one last con, only Fnatic Rim compatibility. So if you get this adapter, install this on your OSW, and then you get a higher end rim, then you have to make a decision. Are you gonna sacrifice this adapter for that rim? So that is likely a decision I'll have to come to later on, but this is really something I do like. It allows you to get the OSW or transition from an OS or from Fnatic to an OSW. So you are really able to transition from Fnatic to an OSW and then get this adapter or something relatively painlessly. And you can use your favorite rims and things like that. So Whoa! Okay. So, with that being said, I do recommend this if you can get the quick release bit. If not, then it's tough to recommend because if you can't get the quick release mail adapter, then it's a hard sell. At that point, I'd say get an, a converter that converts your wheel rim to a six bolt pattern. However, then you lose the Fnatic compatibility. So it's that trade-off. What are you looking to have as your setup? But I do recommend this. I am enjoying this a lot. It gives me the or it gives me all the buttons that I want on an OSW. So everything. And it works well. So with that being said, I'm going to wrap up this review, and yes, I do recommend this adapter. I will add a link to the uh, Sim Racing Bay adapter in the description. I'll email them after this, and I'll see about trying to find out about general availability. But for now, guys, thanks for watching this review. You have a great rest of your day, guys.